Aloha and welcome to Lillian's Vegan World. I'm your host, Lillian Kumik with Think Tech Hawaii. Today's show is New Hawaiian Cookbook Hits Stores 2021, Tasting Hawaii Vegan Style, A New Way to Eat. I would like to introduce my guest today on the show, Dave Molinero from HCAT. Welcome to the show, Dave. Aloha, Lil. Um, great to see you again, my love. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very well, thank show. you. Thank you for joining us today. I would like to show the, the picture of the book. It's uh, just coming out. It will be hitting stores in mid-November, which will be next month of 2021. Very, very excited This is, um, for this second one. It's actually over 120 plant-based uh, dishes and recipes of the islands, um, foods trending in restaurants in Hawaii. It is also all gluten free. So you've got two books in the one this time. I'm um, very excited for this. And Dave actually took the, the cover shot for this, this book. How did that come I about, did. Dave? I did. Well, I had a very good model. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a natural. Um, I am, I want to tell you too, I'm very proud of what you are doing. And I know this book is just going to be amazing. So um, you are very cagey in putting it together. I did a little bit of the work with the editing, but uh, I am really jazzed about it. So I know this is, a, this is gonna be exciting um, and I'm glad to be part of it. And uh, you're very, very talented. I'm probably very biased, of course, too, being that I'm in love with you very much. And yes, um, I'm your husband and I'm really, really jazzed about this. So. <laughs> um, Dave, yeah, I, I'm sure a lot of the viewers want to know what it's like living with a vegan because you yourself are not vegan, but I like to call you plant strong. Explain what your uh, lifestyle is since marrying the author of the book, yours truly. You know, just last night we were talking about uh, um, our relationship and I said I in a million years never thought I would be married to a vegan. And um, it's been it's been rewarding to say the least. Uh, I know I'm really spoiled because you are such a talented chef and what you create is just amazing. What you pull out of the refrigerator and put together is, is truly remarkable. Um, you're right, I'm not totally plant-based, but the home is, and it has made a big difference because I've really cut out a lot of dairy, a lot of red meat. Um, I know I'm definitely eating healthier. I think overall my health has really improved. So um, for those in your audience that are like, oh my God, I can never be vegan, try it one meal at a time, try it once a week, try it twice a week, three times a week, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, take your pick, but make the, make the jump into it because it does make a difference. And uh, yeah, with Lillian's help, um, I'm in a much better place. Um, I'm glad to hear that. And I, I can vouch for the fact that you have definitely uh, changed your eating habits in the past three years since we have been together here in Hawaii. Um, thank you for bringing me to the islands. Who knew I would end up writing two books? <laughs> about uh, the, the local food here. So Dave, as we do, as we go through some of the, the dishes in the book, I would, I would love for you to, to chip in and uh, tell the viewers what you thought of some of the dishes. Let's start with the first slide because um, you did a, a lot of the taste testing. Dave, what is this? Uh, okay, <laughs> vegan, uh, this is the vegan honey. And I will, let me caveat this, one of the, one of the things that there was a rather funny conversation you and I had was, um, honey, I miss honey. And uh, you said, no, it's bee vomit. It's not vegan. <laughs> it's, uh, but your plant-based honey is really delicious. And it, the consistency, the smell, and obviously the taste is, is very, very close to honey. And I love it. So you knocked that out of the park. But it was funny. I, I, I did miss honey. And I was like, I'm struggling with this. How, how the hell am I going to enjoy my honey when I'm it's not vegan, so. I know. Well, you can't just be married to one. I know that you missed it. And uh, this is why I chose this first slide today, because I, I was so um, happy when I, when I nailed this recipe for you, because I, I, had, I had heard several times throughout the years that you, how much you missed honey. By the way, for the viewers who don't know why vegans well, do not consume honey, is because it's a byproduct. Um, an animal, it is considered an animal byproduct, um, along with a lot of other things. But honey is something that most vegans 
do actually stop consuming when they embark on a 100% plant-based diet. So the three honeys in this picture are actually, so one is a plain honey, the other one is a pineapple ginger honey um, inspired by Hawaiian flavors. And the third one is a chili honey, which I called hot honey. And all three are just incredible. You, you really, you're gonna have a tough time um, distinguishing them from the real stuff. So that's one of my um, recipes in the book in the chapter um, which I have veganized uh, condiments. So it's a lot of veganized um, condiments like the honey. The, the second slide is also in that same chapter. Here's Yum. one that is very, very Hawaiian. It's the Hawaiian chili pepper water. This is something I had never ever seen until I moved to Hawaii and I just thought it was amazing. It brings out so much flavor. And the good news is you can actually make your own. So there is a recipe for that. Um, Dave, you're not very much into the spicy factor. Yeah, um, I'm not. I like spice, but uh, you being, especially your Fijian background, it I know you love heat. Uh, and then, like you said, this is a staple. And I know this is a go-to for you. You use it a lot. And it is very delicious. The freshness, the heat, uh, the flavor mm -hmm. is awesome. So um, I, I know you love this a great deal. Yeah, it's a very, I was going to say, it's a very um, clever condiment because this is something, this is something I love about um, this book and my first book, Hawaii, A Vegan Paradise, is that I am hoping that by showcasing Hawaiian food, you can see, you can see all the fun stuff that Hawaii has to offer. Most people on a plant-based diet don't immediately think Hawaiian food because I, I never did until I moved here. I never realized that there was so much, um, you know, exciting stuff here, so much, so many interesting ingredients to play around with. And definitely the um, chili pepper water is something that it's, it's made primarily from vinegar. So it's very sour, but it just adds yeah. a really great punch to a lot of dishes. So I'm hoping this book um, reaches people outside of Hawaii and can uh, open up your little Pandora box to a whole new world of condiments, flavors, and spices. So I, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and, and that it gets into, I, we've talked about this a lot, but you um, have written Hawaii themed cookbooks. And I think that's because you see the potential here in Hawaii and the diversity of food. You've veganized it. Um, expand a little bit more to your audience on why you think um, plant-based foods, the Hawaiian foods are so, so important. Well, actually, Dave, according to the Diabetes Research Center in Hawaii, about 442,000 adults or 41.5% of the population here are pre-diabetic. Mm. While they say, they go on to say on their website, that about 154,365 people, um, individuals in the adult population or 13.1% of adults here actually have diabetes. That's Those are huge. Scary, scary figures. Um, I have some friends and, and colleagues that are, are struggling from that as well too. And I've talked to them about a plant-based diet, obviously, and, and telling them to grab one of your cookbooks because they're, they're so good. So. Um, and for me to adapt a plant-based diet, I know there's a lot of benefits to it. And um, I know it's a passion for you. And that's why you find vegan cooking and vegan lifestyle so important. It is important. And actually, I'm not sure if you saw the uh, article on the front page of today's Star Advertiser. Um, it, the, the article is about the, how the pandemic fuels spike in childhood obesity. Um, childhood obesity is is um, increasing, unfortunately, here in Hawaii as well. So there's uh, a lot of reasons why I'm so passionate about sharing my knowledge of the vegan lifestyle and plant-based diet, especially in Hawaii, where it seems, you know, there is there is a need for some kind of shift. And I think that it's going to have to start with children because sometimes as adults, we're so set in our ways in what we believe is healthy and what we believe we should be feeding our children that we are, you know, actually um, 
not giving sometimes the kids what they what their bodies need in order to grow into healthy adults. No, that, thing, that's so. Oops, sorry, Lo. No, I was just going to say, and the thing is, children develop eating habits that they carry on throughout their adulthood. So it's so important to educate children. I would love if there's if there are any viewers watching today's show, I would love um, anyone in the educational system to reach out. I would love to get into um, helping schools and and children learn a better way of eating. And I think no one can argue the fact um, the research is there, the um, studies are shown again and again that plant-based diet, not only is it the fastest growing diet on the planet today, it is also um, what everyone is calling the best, the best diet in the world in terms of what it can do for your health. Um, and it, more importantly, how it can prevent lots of unnecessary illnesses, including diabetes, which, um, you know, is, is going to very, be very scary if you contract COVID-19 if you're diabetic, so um, very serious problem. So, and getting back to your point, Dave, that's part of the reason why I like to share um, this vegan world of mine, because I know how important it is. And as a human being, I think it's my social responsibility to leave the world a better place than when I entered it. That's one thing I think you and I also have in common is we're trying to make this planet a better, better place. So, um, but I, getting back to kids and the, and the lifestyle, it's really important that kids are early adopters, they understand. And um, I think it's great that you like to entertain and get at uh, plant-based, more plant-based diets in the school systems. We've talked about that as well, too. Um, even in our fire departments and first responders, I think they could really benefit and would want to benefit from, from a plant-based diet too. So maybe that's another think, option for you. Yeah. I mean, you know, the relationship that you have with food, it, it is similar to relationships you have with people, whether it's your spouse, your family, your children, your neighbors, your friends, um, the relationship with, that you have with food is very real. It can be very toxic. On the other hand, it can be very healthy. Yeah. So um, mindful eating and being aware of what you're putting on, on your plate is of the utmost importance, especially in times like this. Um, Dave, I would like to take a short break to the viewers. Please do stay tuned for more about my new book, Tasting Hawaii Vegan, St uh, Vegan Style. We'll be right back after these short messages. Aloha, I'm Joshua Cooper, and welcome to Cooper Union. We look at what's happening with human rights around the world, and we invite you to tune in every Tuesday where we feature the voices of the people from the front lines sharing the struggles for self-determination, for the importance of sustainability and solidarity with one another to make the world a better place for all of humanity. If you can't catch it live, you can also Look at thinktechhawaii.com, as well as on Vimeo and many other places to catch the amazing shows where we hear from authors, activists, academics, analysts, and artists who are contributing to positive social change around the planet. Aloha Mekapono. Thank you for joining us for Justice. Aloha and welcome back to Lillian's Vegan World. I'm your host Lillian Kumi with Think Tech Hawaii. Today I'm talking about my, my latest book and the release of Tasting Hawaii Vegan Style. It's my second cookbook um, with over 120 plant-based recipes um, of, of dishes trending in the islands. I'm happy to have and very excited to have on the show Dave Molinero. Welcome back to the show, Dave. Lillian, <laughs> good to be back. <laughs> um, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, we are talking about my new book, and I do want to tell the viewers you are as much a, a part of this book as I am because the amount of time that you helped edit 
um, edit the book and uh, helped me, of course, with the taste testing and gave me advice on some of the dishes. It's uh, It's been a pleasure creating this with you. I do also want to thank my publisher, it, the local publishing house, Mutual Publishing, Bennett Heimer, the uh, publisher, and of course, my awesome um, product, uh, designer, layout designer and editor, Jane Gillespie, who helped create the book with me. Her, her design for the second book and the first book, both just amazing. She is awesome and I, um, I do want to send out a huge mahalo to Jane. Mutual Publishing, by the way, do most of the cookbooks in Hawaii and, and have a, you know, a huge array of cookbooks, including one from Sam Choi, who I have actually had the pleasure of cooking for. I was very excited about that. That was a fun <laughs> evening. <laughs> yes. Dave, I do want to show the viewers some more of what they can expect in the second book, Tasting Hawaii Vegan Style. So let's take a look at some more of the dishes with the next slide. Mm, what does oh yes. this look like? <laughs> I think this I'm is going to blow people away. Like people don't expect that this is vegan. This is actually a vegan mo mozzarella, which I have named mozzarella. Um, so made again, made all made possible with plants. This vegan mozzarella is actually made from cashews, and I have some roasted red bell peppers, eggplant, and I've turned that into a caprese. A, an Italian um, salad that you often see. So with some fresh basil, it's just stunning. Oh, I love this. This is a fave. I, next time, tell me to wear a bib for the show because <laughs> I'm truly, yeah, that is such a delicious, uh, I love Caprese and you have done with your vegan cheese is just remarkable. And I know our friends and, and family that have had it just, are, they've just raved about it. So you've I'm looking forward to the response and reaction on this one as well, because it's delicious. So. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. I actually do have in this book a whole chapter on my vegan cheeses. The next slide is also um, one of the creations in that, that chapter. This is a tofu feta platter. Um, I have done tofu so many ways in the book. It's uh, made from tofu, obviously. Tofu is actually feta cheese in disguise who, who knew has exactly the same um, texture profile and once you marinate it in some spices and um, vinegar it does actually come out to be very very feta like almost scary I've also um, baked the feta put it in olive oil um, bottled it in olive oil which is going to be a great gift for people so I mean, this platter is just out of this world, something that you can't find, unfortunately, in restaurants. That's why I was um, compelled to write this next book of foods trending in restaurants, because I don't want anyone to miss out just because they're on a plant-based diet or gluten-free. Remember, this book is all gluten-free as well. Every single recipe in there, gluten-free and plant-based. <laughs> I think there's going to be a, a run on tofu after people see this video and that picture. <laughs> I hope so, because it's so easy to make. It's just a matter of marinating. So it, it just incredible how far we've come with vegan food. Let's take another look at a different recipe. This is something mm. that I had neighbors come over to try. It's the mox tail for the mox tail stew. I've even put burdock root in the center of the um, the patties to make them make it look like the bone, bone. <laughs> of the of the ox tail, which is I've called which I've called mox tail. And in the next slide, you're going to see the um, recipe, the end result, which is a very very umami filled stew, which is incredible. There it is. Uh, it doesn't even it doesn't look vegan. <laughs> yeah. No, I are. I remember this day very well. I remember our neighbors coming over and sampling it and yeah, just off the hook good. And with the burdock root in the middle, it looked so much uh, like oxtail. It was, it was, it was scary good. It yeah, it actually is a bit, park. it's a bit scary for someone like yeah. me because as you yeah. know, I actually avoid food that looks anything like meat, even though it's plant-based. But I did, um, I did include a chapter that I have named for the curious cook in my book. And it is filled with uh, recipes of vegan seafood dishes and vegan meat dishes, none of which contain fake 
plant-based meat. None of that uh, processed meat is used in any of the recipes. So all of the recipes are made possible only with plants, in particular mushrooms. I have utilized mushrooms to the point where I think it's going to freak people out, the amazing yeah. things that you can actually do um, just with a you know variety of, of mushrooms. So all of the all of the recipes are um, made from whole foods and are plant-based. Let's take a look at another recipe. This Wait, is, is this a favorite, favorite this was, restaurant. Yeah, this was a <laughs> this was a favorite among amongst my neighbors when they came over for some of the taste testing. I'll let you describe this one, Dave. Obviously, well, it's a vegan calamari. Yes, so um, I'm a huge calamari fan out of the house, obviously, and uh, there's some really great calamari on Island, and uh, this was remarkable. It looks exactly like calamari, and obviously, it's not seafood based it's just absolutely spectacular it's actually and, made uh, from king oyster mushrooms the, the king and, oyster and they, mushroom that's right yeah. yep it's they actually delicious. take on a very very similar texture because the king oyster mushrooms are used often as a seafood alternative um, if you're familiar with plant-based food you may already know that but i i also use the king oyster mushrooms um, to mimic scallops um, and in this case, obviously the calamari, they, they, the texture is very similar. It's, all, it's it almost is. a rubbery kind chewy, of mouth yes. feel. Chew, yes, chewy. There's a bit of pull in it. So it's, it's just the perfect substitute um, for calamari. So, well, what's um, amazing about your cooking is you have taken, again, um, a plant-based option and not only the taste, but also the the visual, but in this case, the texture and mouthfeel was just amazing. So yeah, I, your 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 audience and uh, the people that are going to buy, I guarantee the second book is going to fly off the shelf. The first one's awesome. Uh, this one is even uh, takes it to the next level. And but this is this is a prime example of how talented you are. And just I, you amaze me. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you for putting a ring on it. <laughs> Let's have a look at the next slide. Oh, that's a big rock. <laughs> How about this one, Dave? Um, this one mm. is actually dedicated to my mother, this recipe. My mother is a tuna sandwich fanatic. Yep. <laughs> she has been eating tuna sandwiches for a very long time. So I knew I had to do um, a vegan tuna sandy, which I've named it, named the recipe in the book. Um, vegan tuna who knew that you could do this with chickpeas or garbanzo beans mm. and you uh, again knock this out of the park uh, i remember having a smattering and taste of this when you and i went out for a weekend getaway and we packed a little picnic you made a tuna fish sandwich for me and i loved it it was fantastic mm -hmm. yeah this is something i think um I mean, all of the recipes in the book, I, I must say, are not, they're not uh, targeted for a vegan audience. They're targeted no. for anyone who loves food, period. You don't have to be vegan to enjoy stuff like this. Um, and it just going back again to the, the state of our health here in Hawaii, I think it's so important to start really thinking about um, substitutes or changing some of those eating habits that are just not serving you well. And I think one way you can do that is to honestly delve more into plant-based cooking and food. And I know that a lot of people here say, you know, that the Hawaiian food, I can't live without it. Well, I'm going to oh, yeah. prove to you in this second book, also in my first book, Hawaii, A Vegan Paradise, that you absolutely can um, continue eating all your Hawaiian favorites, just the healthier versions. So, um, Again, you, you mastered that just... in the first book, Will. Absolutely. I, and I think the second one is going to even uh, take it to the next level as well, too. For non vegans out there, don't be afraid of making the plunge because you are really missing out on a great opportunity to eat healthier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I do really want to make um, bring that point across that it, it is a book for any person on the planet. And also because it's gluten free, I have opened up um, that opportunity as well for people who can't consume gluten to to delve into some of these um really beautiful hawaiian inspired dishes let's have a look at another one 
Ah, this is called Da Hawaiian, D-A, the Hawaiian taro and spinach soup. Um, the, the soup chapter, Dave, in my book, I have actually named the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Remember that well. Yeah, and it goes through all um, it goes through all of the, uh, the all of the soups in that soup chapter are actually roasted soups. So I explain in the book how just by roasting the vegetables before adding them to your soup, you add a char and uh, another flavor profile and depth that you simply cannot get by boiling vegetables. So you'll learn something in each chapter of the book. There's a lesson to be learned and there's tips and tricks on how to just take your, how to elevate your cooking, whether it's plant-based cooking or not. So I do want to quickly run through the last slides. If you could just um, show them one after the other as we are running out of time. This is a chicken dish made from mushrooms. Tofu spam, mushroom jerky. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> Rocky Beach Road that you named, Dave. Yes. Thank you for naming that oh, recipe. Delish. Your photography is amazing, Well, <laughs> This is um, the furikake glazed popcorn and nuts pecans. Okay. So that that's um, furikake, as you know, is a popular spice here in Hawaii. And uh, I have turned it into a glaze that I've also um, smothered sweet baked sweet potato in it's just some of the the recipes in this book are crazy crazy good crazy in the in the best way possible <laughs> Dave we are <laughs> coming towards the end of the show can I ask you to leave a thought with the viewers when it comes to plant-based food you need to try plant-based food I know Plant-based uh, food has got, there's a political element to being vegan and uh, don't shy away from it. Don't be afraid. It's not about boring salads. It's not about uh, bland vegetables that are steamed. It, it's really creative uh, and really tasty and remarkable. And um, Lillian, your first book really uh, went a long way in explaining about the lifestyle and it has a lot of techniques and spices. I know this next book is gonna take it to the next level, but um, don't worry about making the transition. All it takes, start with one meal, and I guarantee you that's gonna to move to a second, third and fourth, mm -hmm. and perhaps yeah. maybe a change to a total vegan lifestyle, but um, that's great, great the book. advice. Thank you, thank you so much, great advice. And thank you, Dave, for being on the show. Uh, Tasting Hawaii Vegan Style is available now for pre-order sale from, the, from Mutual Publishing. You can go to their website, mutualpublishing.com. You will also be supporting local when you purchase this book. Um, the information is on my webpage, my website, lillianvegan.com. You can go there and there's information on where you can purchase the books. Thank you so much to the viewers and thank you to the people of Hawaii for all of your support with the first book. Um, I look forward to meeting you all at some of the book signings in the, the near future. Do stay safe, eat healthy, and uh, until next time, aloha.